Bipartisan legislation is calling for transparency when it comes to college graduation rates and employment outcomes. Introduced by Republican Congressman Paul Mitchell of Michigan and Illinois Democratic Congressman Raja Krishnamoorthy, the measure aims to make it easier to choose the university that best suits a student's goals. The two legislators also partnered last session focusing on upgrading the nation's career and technical education delivery system. So now they are zeroing in on information related to educational outcomes. And according to Congressman Mitchell, quote, these days one can find more information on a washing machine's reliability than the likelihood of attaining a degree at a specific university and results in a meaningful career. He joins us now from Capitol Hill along with his colleague Congressman Krishnamoorthy to discuss the College Transparency Act. Both served together on the House Oversight and Reform Committee. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Good morning. Congressman Krishnamoorthy, let me start with you. What can you tell us about this legislation and why it's important? Well, I think it's a game changer, Crystal. I think that uh, perhaps your viewers know that um, we already know trans we already know generally uh, pricing for universities and colleges and community colleges and, and for their degree programs, but we don't have data uh, in at least a consolidated fashion about uh, student outcomes uh, by major and college. And so what we're seeking to create is basically a portal or a database or website where you could see not only pricing by major and college, but also the student outcomes sure. uh, at each of those um, universities by major. So for instance, you could learn about average salaries, average student debt, average time to employment, and then it, it would also be disaggregated so that you could see um, what are the average statistics for veterans or folks who might be disabled or for women and minorities and so forth. So I think this is going to be a game changer in the sense that it's going to spark those important conversations between parents and students about return on investment. Um, obviously, this is choosing a college is sometimes an emotional uh, uh, conversation, and now we're bringing some facts and statistics to the table, and hopefully that will uh, spark a, uh, a more uh, reasoned discussion um, because we need people to make the right decision so that they don't load up too much student debt and then end up in careers that uh, don't fit uh, their talents and aspirations. Congressman College, Mitchell, uh, uh, can I just ask you, is there, is, is there any pushback on this to the schools? have the data? Do they not want to provide this data? Is there anyone who doesn't? It sounds like something that everybody would think is a good idea, but there's always somebody. Well, the universities, actually most of the college universities support the bill. The Big Ten universities uh, support it. Uh, there's 166 outside groups that support the bill. We have 30 co-sponsors in the House already on the bill. Uh, so there isn't a lot of pushback from external groups. In fact, they want to do this. Uh, this is a huge investment families will make in their young people's education. In many cases, they'll spend more money on post-secondary education for their children than they do in buying their home, yet they have such little information. They should be able to tell the difference between the nursing program at Michigan State University and the nursing program at University of Michigan, their likelihood of getting in, their likelihood of graduating, and getting a job. And when they do get a job, what they're likely to make so they can make an informed decision. It's about consumer protection. It's about people having access to information to make wise decisions on a huge investment. And we talk about the student loan issue. One of them is people are making bets, literally, with little information and hope that they get a career. And we, we can fix that, and we should, and the information in many cases exists, so it's not a big burden on any institution. Yes. Congressman Christian Worthy, this isn't the first time that the two of you have partnered on legislation together. Um, there's, a, I can tell you, a lot of rancor between uh, left and right in the House and across the country. What has been the key to this sort of successful partnership between the two of you? I don't know what rancor you're referring to. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I just, I've heard we, things. Um, I don't know. Look, uh, uh, you know, um, Paul and I uh, came in together into Congress, and uh, we struck, a, struck up a friendship right away. And we've always been talking about how do we how do we work on things that we might be able to agree on, uh, as opposed to you know just kind of call each other names <laughs> on things that we disagree on. And um, higher education is something that we passionately. Uh, should be available to everyone, regardless of whether they go on to a four-year college degree or uh, whether they decide they want to enter the trades and want to get a, a quality post-secondary education in another way. The point is that you know we have to meet people educationally where they are, and we have to give them enough information so they make the right decision. That's what spurred um, our uh, partnership on the College Transparency Act. 
There's things that Raja and I disagree about, but I think the important thing comes that we respect one another, we respect where they come mm -hmm. from, we respect differences of opinion, and there are things we can work well together on without having to develop some kind of a hostility. And I think that exists for many members in Congress. Unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't play that way externally. But as, there's a lot of things we work on together and uh, work with a lot of Democrats on. Almost all my bills are uh, bipartisan. I think most of yours yes, are as well. Yes, yes, uh, and, 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 and And this is an area where I really don't think there's partisanship. Um, I think we're grappling with a common challenge, which is how do we make sure that our young people and others um, get the the type of post-secondary education they need to be successful. This is a very important question, not only for parents and families, but also for businesses. Yes. Uh, as Paul knows, you know, both of us were, were former small business people. Yeah. Uh, there are seven million unfilled jobs in the workforce because um, employers can't locate the skilled people necessary to fill those jobs. And so what we're trying to do is, at the same time, we're trying to help you know students uh, get the right uh, jobs and right education to get those jobs. We're also trying to help grow the economy and help employers at the same time. Congressman Krishnamurthy, let me ask you about something that you may not agree so much with your Republican colleague on. What is the direction of the Oversight Committee? What are your priorities uh, right now on the Democratic side? Oh, wow. Yeah, you, you, uh, you, you did hit on something that maybe we, <laughs> we might have a difference of opinion on. I think, okay, let's start with where we can agree, okay, which is that um, uh, there should be checks and balances in Absolutely. government. Um, you know, Congress, uh, as a legislative branch, um, has the duty to perform oversight on the executive branch. Um, and the executive branch has and should have discretion uh, to implement laws. Uh, because uh, they obviously uh, have the resources and have the opportunity to learn how to implement those laws in the best fashion possible. I think where we uh, might disagree or where there might be some daylight is um, I, quite frankly, am disappointed uh, with the current administration's unwillingness to produce um, information and witnesses and testimony on certain very important issues. Uh, just as an example, uh, security clearances, that's something that I've particularly examined. Um, it's about national security. I sit on the House Intelligence Committee. Our intelligence community is uh, made up of some of the most, you know, some of the finest, most talented people in the world. Um, I don't want to undercut their uh, activities in any way by having people in government who should not have access to top secret information. So that's why um, I'm hoping that in a bipartisan way we can examine this question and make sure that the processes are correct uh, for giving people access to top, secure, top secret information in, in, in government. Even in this topic, we aren't that far apart. I say that because there, we should have oversight, and, but oversight needs to be at some level reasonable. Security clearances are a concern. They're a concern in terms of well, who has access to information that can be sensitive. I sometimes have questions around this place about that as well, <laughs> but that's, that's a conversation. <laughs> You're talking about members of Congress. <laughs> yes, I am. In fact, there's second. a few I wonder about. <laughs> uh, but here's the, uh, here's the reality. We also, American people expect us to get things done. Uh, this is, uh, we cannot, it needs to put people over politics and stop the investigation frenzy at some point in time. So we actually get things done. We've got this bill that's important. We've got higher education reauthorization. We've got an infrastructure issue, which you guys are yeah. aware of, that we need to address in this country. And, and we are moving very little on that, if at all, because we want to spend time fighting over who appears before Congress. The, the people out there, outside this wonderful well, bubble in Washington, expect us to get things done and not simply investigate each other and see how that goes. They, they consider it kind of, at this point in time, getting petty, in my opinion. At least that's what my constituents tell me. I, I, think, um, I think there's some agreement that we have to get things done, obviously. Yeah, um, and, and this initiative with regard to the College Transparency Act is, is one, of, one of those pieces of legislation that people are excited about. But I think we, sh we should be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. We should be able to conduct <laughs> oversight and at the same time I'm not sure get we've demonstrated done. that some days. Well... <laughs> Maybe we, right, we need to all uh, practice all the, that. All the, all the bipartisan spirit here. Thank you so much for joining Thanks us. For being good to see you both. Us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Next on Rising, the former CIA director of counterintelligence described the counterintelligence threat as, quote, pernicious and uh, pervasive and pernicious. There you go. He expands on this with Hill TV's chief Washington correspondent, Sagar and Jetty, when Rising continues. <laughs> 